Thanks for joining us for another installment of PBA Goes for Gold. Today we have joining us Michael Dufresne from Grizzly Discoveries. Grizzly trades under the symbol GZD on the Venture Exchange. They are a diversified Canadian mineral exploration company exploring for world-class gold and base metal deposits in British Columbia. Hi Mike and thanks for joining us. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Thank you. No worries, Paul. Thanks very much for that introduction. And um, as Paul mentioned, my name is Mike Dufresne. I am the uh, consulting geologist with Grizzly Discoveries, uh, their, their main technical person. I've been with the project since its inception in 2009. Uh, Grizzly Discoveries is a Canadian exploration junior explorer on the TSX Venture Exchange. And uh, we are trying to reinvigorate the company and, and have a, a plan, a number of plans for exploration uh, on our projects. Um, coming this year. Um, the obligatory forward-looking statements, there are certain forward-looking statements, just be aware of those. You can read this at your own leisure. Um, today, um, Grizzly is focused really on two projects in British Columbia, both of them up against the U.S. border. The Greenwood project is our main project, and then we have a silver, copper, cobalt project called Robocop. Um, precious and base metal battery properties covering about a little over 160,000 acres. Um, the Greenwood project in particular is an advanced project. Um, we conducted quite a bit of drilling. There's been a lot of historic drilling, numerous existing targets, tremendous potential for new discoveries. It's in a, it's in a proven and prolific and historic mining jurisdiction. Uh, the Phoenix and Motherlode uh, open pits were, were mined as recently as the 1970s. Uh, it is completely road accessible uh, with obviously some major logistical vans having Highway 3 run through the center of a project. There are gas pipelines, there's power, uh, everything anyone would need for a mining project. We, today I'm going to talk quite a bit about um, a focus on CAT 28. It'll be our initial focus in 2020. And as you can see here, there's an historic hole drilled in the 1990s that uh, produced 52 grams over 3.35 meters. We have a one uh, First Nations uh, active partner, the Osoyos Indian Man, and they have been supportive throughout our exploration um, in the district. We have such a large land package, we also have the point, potential to joint venture multiple projects, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, gold sector is obviously seeing a tremendous resurgence. We're seeing seven year highs, uh, in particular on gold. I, I think silver is not far behind. Um, Grizzly is going to focus on, on gold and silver at present and provide uh, leverage to the, to the gold silver prices. We believe Grizzly is highly undervalued in the face of this resurgence uh, in precious metal pricing. Uh, management and directors. The company was conceived in 2005. Brian Testa has been the president and CEO since then and is still president and CEO of note. We've added uh, two new directors over the last year, year and a half. Joe Price, who's vice president of uh, Ethos Gold, and she is a, a longtime geological consultant to the pure mining. Lots of experience in Australia and Canada in order to provide some technical support on the board of Grizzly. And just very recently, Jim Gregg has come on board, and, and Jim is an MBA currently at Benchmark Metals, which also has a Northern BC project, and he has, as you can see with his uh, bio, has tons of experience with prior junior mining companies over the last 20 years. Um, capital structure, we are about 67 million shares. The warrants and options not exercised, about 80 million shares. It's about $100,000 in treasury, uh, no debt. Uh, management and friends and associates control over 60% of this company. And I think something that's very unique to a lot of juniors um, since 2005, its inception, Grizzly has never had a rollback. Um, so this is original stock. Uh, we have a lot of valued shareholders. The insiders have maintained a significant position from inception in 2005. And that includes Brian Testo, who himself owns uh, close to 15 or 20 percent of the company and has maintained that position since 2005. Currently, you can see here we've had a little bit more volume since the new year. Um, we are trading in the five to six cent range at present. Um, so we're hoping to improve upon that with work and news. So this is the 
Greenwood project that I'm going to focus on today is just a little under 160,000 acres, all in pink here, number of uh, notable occurrences here. This actually is the U.S. border, and this is the Republic area with all the production in the Republic, um, Republic District uh, by ECHO and ECHO. Um, it's a gold producing jurisdiction along the Canada U.S. border. The district collectively has produced more than 7 million ounces. Um, the, the KET 28 project is less than 13 kilometers from Kinross's 1.3 million ounce Buckhorn gold mine. And that just recently closed and produced at an average grade of greater than 13 grams. And in fact, a lot of their ore produced at 25 grams per ton plus. Uh, it's 50 kilometers from Fiore's Golden Eagle mine, who yesterday announced an update to their two plus million ounce gold resource, which is down towards the town of Republic. Uh, just to recap a bit of the history of production and resources, Greenwood Republic area, and I, I, I'm bringing them together as one because they're the same geology. Seven plus million ounces of production, 1.37 million ounces in the Greenwood area, 5.8 million ounces in the Republic area, significant silver and copper production, greater than 25 million ounces uh, in both um, in Greenwood and Republic area and over 660 million pounds of copper, which primarily came out of the Phoenix and the Motherload uh, pits on the Canadian side of the border. The main Greenwood producers, the Phoenix, um, Motherload, Dentonia, Mount McKinney, Golden Crown, Winnipeg. The main Republic producers, and of note here, Hecla produced for over 100 years in the Republic area and produced more than two plus million ounces and still holds a significant land position and a significant resource. Uh, other main producers were a lot of the uh, Kinross Echo Bay producers, Buckhorn, Lanefoot, Overlook, K2, Emanuel Creek, and Key Deposits. We believe they're still in resources greater than six plus million ounces um, with significant silver. Um, the, the projects that have uh, resources, Lexington, Golden Crown, Lone Star, Golden Eagle, Republic, and the, uh, the Republic Golden Promise, Knob Hill trend down near Republic. There's been a flurry of recent activity in the Greenwood district, and this is the eastern half. The town of Greenwood is right here, the town of Rock Creek and the town of Midway for reference, Grand Forks right here. Um, and you can see Grizzly is in, is in uh, dark magenta and light magenta here. We have a significant land position or are probably the biggest land holder in the district. Uh, Golden Dawn Minerals has been trying to restart the Lexington mine. He's trying to get their financial um things in order uh, for a restart of lexington mine and mill uh, uh ggx gold, gold drop with some pretty interesting uh, uh high grade results x-min is uh just announced today actually uh, going to start some drilling at the providence target which is up in this knob hill area and belmont resources a couple of days ago announced a a deal on the uh, jackpot athelstan which is the essentially the extension of the Golden Crown trend. And they'll be doing, they have been doing quite a bit of work. Grizzly through its joint venture partner uh, at the time, Kinross Gold has done quite a bit of soil sampling, several thousand soil samples at the Atwood Evening Star and the Last Chance area. So all these red circles here are areas that are, are I've got a lot of focus and a lot of work here in the last year or two. And um, we're hoping that this is going to turn into a nice area. This is a blow up on that. Athelstan Evening Star area, just to illustrate that uh, the blue is the Crown Grants that Belmont has acquired, the Athelstan uh, jackpot uh, land position, everything else in light blue is grizzly ground, or light blue and uh, beige. And uh, this is all the soil sampling that we've done in the Evening Star area with numerous samples greater than 100 ppg gold, up, upwards of a gram per ton of gold. Um, and we haven't done any drilling in this area here at all. And this needs follow-up mapping and eventually ground geophysics and drilling. Just to give you a taste, this is the Golden Crown Winnipeg trend that is, uh, there's an underground one on that um, I, I believe Golden Dawn will, will at some point in time. Have been doing some drilling, will do some future drilling and hope to reopen. Active companies in the U.S., so on the U.S. side and the Republic uh, area, Adamera recently has just announced a joint venture with Haas Child and are planning uh, exploration programs there. Fiore Gold just announced yesterday a new resource down at, um, at the Golden Eagle, which is in this Northern Hill area. And, um, you know, the, these two districts are one, essentially. The geology links them, and it is a world-class gold district. 
um, it was all part of if it was all part of BC or being the top one or two producing gold districts in BC. Just to give you an example. So what links these? Um, it's geology, obviously, that links them. And it's a series of Paleozoic Grobbins. And it actually starts further east than the, than the uh, Greenwood District. In the Rosslyn Grobbin, you can see the Republic Grobbin. Then there's the Chiroda Grobbin, Rock Creek Grobbin, and Okanagan Grobbin. And this is over about 125 kilometers. Uh, you can see all these areas where we have targets on the Canadian side of the border. The Yellow Star marks the Buckhorn Mine. Um, and what's, what's really important about these Paleozoic Grobbins is the structures associated with the Grobbins, particularly at their edges. And you can see a large congregation of mineralization and gold deposits at the edges of these Grobbins. They've been conduits for intrusions, hydrothermal fluids, and precious and base metal mineralization. So that's our focus. You can see here, this illustrates our large land position. This is about 75 kilometers, 70 kilometers by about 27 kilometers. Everything in color here is grizzly land. And we have numerous uh, targets all over the project area. We collected over 2,600 rock samples, 10,000 soil samples, 170 or so heavy mineral samples, lots of geophysics. And in fact, we drilled 58 holes and over 10,000 meters. More recently in the Kinross Grizzly Joint Venture, about 5,000 soils and 11 drill holes and 2,500 meters have all been conducted in the last three or four years. These are some example highlights of some of the uh, historic, course, historic drilling uh, pre the Kinross uh, Grizzly Joint Venture. Um, some old 1990s drilling, uh, nine, almost nine grams across six meters, 52 grams across 3.3 meters, again 28. Uh, some of the Grizzly drilling back in 2009, uh, almost 12 grams across two meters. Uh, we have a number of other targets with um, intersections at Dayton and Motherlode and Copper Mountain. Our focus is going to be in 2020, the start, at least, Kent 28. And um, it, our, our, we believe it's part of a large hydrothermal system, this big magnetic feature, which is about two kilometers in, di in diameter. Um, we believe this to be an underlying intrusion. These are the Kent 28 drill holes and soil samples here. All these colored bubbles are, are mean hydrate gold. Um, and you can see that they kept 28 mineralization kind of at the edge of this magnetic feature. Some of the example intersections you saw this on the previous slide. We've done some drilling along strike, 11 grams over two meters, uh, five over 1.7, uh, six over 1.35. We want to do some infill drilling and, and some additional drilling along strike to expand this and produce a maiden resource. Um, here's what the rocks look like. Uh, this is core. This is actually from that hole that produced uh, 52 grams over 3.35 meters. And this is some of the more recent stuff that we drilled. Quartz mean silicification, sericite, and pyrite alteration. Uh, pretty widespread and lots of low grade halos around these higher grade intersections. And this is just a long section. Here's the deposit running northwest. We put a grade shell model together. There's a series of sort of flat line, gently dipping high grade zones with a lot of low grade around them. Our plan or combination of exploration and infill targeting high grade zones. And initially, we're targeting 150 to 300,000 ounces as an initial main resource, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we believe there's potential for a much larger system and resource. And we've got to start somewhere. These black lines with the yellow symbols here are planned drill holes. Uh, they're all laid out. We have, our, we have our drill permits, and we are essentially ready to go as soon as we're financed and get out there. and. Um, Get, uh, let's get some grit set up and get some pads set up. The um, reason we think 150 to 300,000 ounces is important is because Golden Dawn has a mill um, in the Greenwood area. It basically saw one year of production. It was Merritt Mining at the time in 2008. Um, it, it, it basically has got a nice tailings pond that has capacity, um, tremendous capacity. It only produced for one year out of eight years that it was anticipated. Um, and we, we believe we could provide some more to that mill and help those guys get started. Um, our portfolio pro projects for joint venture, the Motherlode, the Sappho project, we have the Robocop, Dayton East. We also have tremendous potential for um, new discoveries. And uh, so we, we have a pretty favorable land package and we need to take advantage of that. Um, in terms of adding value and catalyst for growth, we're focused on precious metals. Uh, Initially, we're going to expand and, and build a mineral resource at Kent 28. We're working in a proven and prolific jurisdiction. We've got an experienced team. We've got some new management additions that are going to continue to look for additions. And we're 
potentially, we have the potential to joint venture non-core projects. And uh, that is it for today. I think I'm ready for questions. Sophie, are you there? Yep, just unmuting, Paul. Okay. Okay, we have uh, quite a few questions here. Let me get through them for you, Mike. Um, first sure. one is, oh, no, here we go. Sorry about that, chat. All right. Um, what is your cash position and financing? Okay, currently we're at $100,000 in the bank with no debt. We are planning a, an initial half million dollar raise here to start field work and ground preparation for drilling. And um, we also want to fly an airborne survey at the Robocop project. And then we'll have a, hope to have a second raise or at a, at a higher price, we're uh, about a million dollars and plan to drill uh, a number of targets with that if we can raise that million bucks on the second fund. So. Okay. Um, some of these questions you may have mentioned in your presentation, but I'll just go over them anyways, um, just in case some people missed it. Uh, I know you mentioned what your main focus would be, but if you could just reiterate that, please. Sure. The Greenwood project is the main focus. We're going to start with KEP 28 and drilling uh, about somewhere around 2,500 to 4,000 meters at KEP 28 in 15 to 20 holes and put a maiden resource, as big a resource, obviously, as we can get together at, at the KEP 28 project as it is at gold mineralizations at the surface and we believe um, is, is, would be pretty amenable to open pit and um, perhaps production through the um, Golden Dawn Mill. Excellent. Um, where did the properties come from and is there any usable past data? Yes, yeah, so this, this project came with a huge amount of data. There had been little exploration since uh, the 1990s. Uh, a couple prospectors in particular, a gentleman by the name of Don Rapon, but there are others when we did deals with them. But Don Rapon, plus our own staking, um, we at one point here in the height of 2011, we're over 235,000 acres. Uh, we have over a thousand uh, historic drill holes in our database, uh, probably probably 5,000 soil samples, something like that. And then of course we built upon that. We have it all digital in GIS type software and um, 3D software. So we, we spent quite a few years in 2009 to 2012 compiling all that data. Thank you. Uh, when can drilling start and have you prepared under government guidance because of COVID? Yeah, so we, uh, Apex, we are a consulting firm. We have got SOPs in place. BC is allowing us uh, to conduct work. We have a, a place of residence that we can work out of, uh, out of the Greenwood district. Um, as long as we're maintaining social distancing and cleanliness, uh, we're, we're free to start exploration. Uh, pretty much in the Greenwood District, you can work year-round. Uh, ideally, uh, May to um, December is the, are the best months to work. Um, there is a bit of snow come January, February, March, um, but we worked all year round there. And ideally, as I mentioned, May, May to December, pretty much there's no snow on the ground in ideal conditions to do field work and drilling. Thank you. Um, how much drilling is needed to get the 43101 on key? KET 28. Yeah, KET 28. Uh, we have planned 15 to 20 holes, and uh, I feel with that we should be able to produce our initial. There's enough drilling on it already with those 15 to 20 holes. Um, I'm hoping that we can put together 150 to 300,000 ounces. Obviously, that depends on the results. Okay, and then how long before you'd start that KET drilling? Um, I think we're targeting probably July, August to start the drilling. Uh, we've got a little bit of groundwork to do um, in terms of pad, uh, pad preparation, landowner notification, and just general cleanup of some things out of the Greenwood District. But we've got to get this initial uh, financing done and, and potentially a second financing. Actually, that was the next question. What infra infrastructure is in place? Oh, so we work out of a, uh, a base camp that uh, can house up to 40 or 50 people. Um, we rent a property out there. We've had that rented since 2010. 
uh, to the Rock Creek area and uh, all our core is stored there. So, you know, I mean, basically we can drive to the property tomorrow and start uh, start work. It's, um, we have fantastic, it's right on Highway 3. We have fantastic infrastructure there. Okay, and is the gold close, no, how close to the surface is gold found? Sure, Cat 28 has got mineralization and trenches right at surface and um, so for the most part, uh, mother load, Cat 28, gold, gold so far is, is at surface and much of our drilling is pretty shallow. We haven't done a lot of deep drilling. And um, so yeah, it's, we're, we're looking for open pitable um, stuff that can turn into high grade underground type mineralization. And uh, is the metallurgy com complex? No, it's pretty much free gold. Uh, in scarns and veins, uh, not anticipating any complexity. The, the Merritt Mill, uh, was, uh, which is now the Golden Dawn Mill, uh, they make a concentrate and they have a gravity, they have a gravity, um, um, they have a gravity leg in their, in their mill, uh, but they primarily produce a concentrate because they also capture the copper. Um, so it's, it's pretty amenable to pretty standard processing uh, uh, processes. Great, and I think we have one more. Um, are permits needed every year? Uh, we've applied and got a five-year permit for KET 28. You can go with one-year permits, but this day and age, particularly, um, I will say in Southern BC, well, all over BC, the permitting process has become pretty rigorous these days. And, uh, but they do allow us to, once we get those permits, have them for five years. Um, and we had one last question come in. Uh, any royalties on the properties? Yes, uh, the original prospector Don Rapon has a has uh, anywhere from a one to a three percent royalty, depending upon which mineral claims. Usually with buy downs on them. Okay, one, another question just popped up. Uh, how much of the company is held by insiders? Uh, right now, I think listed on the slide was twenty two and a half percent, and. I can, uh, I, I believe last time I talked to Grizzly, he's well over 12 million shares himself. I don't think he's ever sold a share other than to facilitate crosses for people coming into placements. So um, yeah, the, inside, the insiders hold a fair bit of stock and really are not sellers. And uh, this company has not been, you know, they've been around since 2005, no rollbacks. Um, they've been pretty serious about their exploration and getting money into the ground. Excellent. So that'll do it for the questions. Unless, Paul, you have any, go ahead. I normally have some. What about uh, the Indigenous people around you? Any problems with them? Uh... Ab absolutely none. And we work with um, with the Osoyoos Indian Band are the main players there. They're based out of Oliver, basically in the, in the Okanagan Valley there. Uh, they own huge tracts of land out there. We've employed a number of people uh, from the reserve, had nothing but good people working for us and they have been nothing but supportive in our exploration. Right, well that's basically about it because normally in BC there's a lot of um, in indigenous nations so that could have been a problem. Yeah uh, and, Paul, and Paul I'd to answer that I work in northern BC and the process is, is uh, it's leaps and bounds more difficult. The Osoyoos Indian Band are good partners they're commercial and um, they recognize the value of, of what we can do and what we can provide to local all right, perfect. Thank you so much, Mike. Great presentation. Uh, we had lots of questions for you, so that was good. Uh, this is a great story and uh, continued success uh, to Grizzly. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.